hasten to add that Mrs. Marciano is the mother of the former heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. So here they are. Welcome, welcome. Bonjour. Bonjour. Mrs. Marciano, you're a fine-looking girl. Thank you. Is uh, Rocky with you tonight? No. Where does uh, he spend most of his time now that he's uh, quit fighting? In Florida. In Florida, huh? Yes. Did you ever hear anybody say he fought a lot of stumble bums on his way to the yeah. top? Get out now. You're making a big mistake. <laughs> But all uh, good fight. Uh, you, you, those rumors were untrue. In all other words. professional man, good man. He didn't fight a lot. Of, fight. He didn't fight a lot of stumble bums, huh? <laughs> On the way up, I mean. He waited until he was champion, and then he <laughs> fought a lot of pushovers, huh? You sure he's not hanging around here any place? No, not what I know. I. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take any chances at my age. You know. <laughs> now your name is uh, Dr. James Whitcomb Riley. Is that right? No, it's Dr. Dr. James, James Whitcomb Brower. Brower, huh? Yes, it rhymes with B-R-O-W-E-R. -E why do you have that uh, G-H in there to make it difficult for quiz masters? Yes. <laughs> is that what you intended to do here tonight? Uh, <laughs> yes. Sir. Oh. <laughs> now, how many d times did you fight uh, Marciano? I'm sorry to say I never even met him. Where do you, where do you come oh, from, Doc? I'm old Vernon Jennings County, Indiana. I'm a Hoosier. You're a Hoosier? Yes. Did you go to college in Indiana? No, I went to college in California. My parents moved there when I was 12 years of age, and I lived there till I was 21 and graduated from college and married my first wife, the daughter of the president. The president of the college? Yes. Well, that's a good way of getting good marks, isn't it? <laughs> when did you graduate? In 1891. Okay. You graduated in 1891? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, how old were you when you graduated? Uh, make, three? Make a guess. <laughs> well, uh, let's see now. 1891, that was uh, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. 70 years. Uh, how old are you now? Well, guess at that. I'd say 72. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Nobody ever graduated at the age he did from college. How old? 53. Am I close? No, I went to the seminary after that at Rochester, New York, before I began my ordained ministerial life. Oh, oh, you're a minister, huh? Yes, oh, I, I... thought you were a doctor. Yes, sir. Well, how uh, old are you, Doc? Well... Uh, I mean, uh, Reverend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Or rabbi, or whatever it is. Padre. It's quite evident, uh, Groucho, that you are not acquainted with preachers. Well, it, it depends on the denomination. Uh, uh, how old are you, uh, did you say you were, Doc? I was 90 on January the 7th. Oh, well, that's wonderful. with a man who's even older than I am. <laughs> How about the ladies, Doc? Are you a gay bachelor or are you uh, in the trap? Well, I'm in the trap. <laughs> How old is uh, uh, Mrs. Brower? Well, Mrs. Brower is 69. She's 21 years younger than I am. Well, you're a cradle snatcher, aren't you? <laughs> you married a kid 20 years younger than you are. Yes, I'd rather smell perfume than liniment. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you sound like you're a pretty active fella, Doc. Does your wife keep up with this fast pace that you yes, seem, she goes with seem me to be following? I go men's clubs. I she goes to the men's clubs with you? Men's club, yes, she, I'm so homely, she'd rather go along than kiss me goodbye. <laughs> Doc, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had a transfusion from Milton Boyle? What kind of a minister are you, a uh, uh, Methodist? I'm a, I've been preaching the gospel of Christ for 70 years, and I'm a Baptist preacher and the past president of the American Baptist Convention. Oh. So I'm just honored that any Baptist wow. preacher can get in this country. Oh, that's wonderful.
What made you decide to become a Baptist minister when you could have been an old well, renegade like me, huh? <laughs> That's what I was going to tell you, the, uh, my father and mother... I'm no good, you know. No good at all. <laughs> my father and mother were very religious, and they wanted me to be a preacher. Friends wanted me to be a comedian, and uh, perhaps if I had, I'd have preceded you. <laughs> Nobody has preceded me. <laughs> Look, if you'd like, I'll switch spots with you. Yeah, yeah. And nobody would succeed you. <laughs> well, I'm not sure of that. Yeah. But anyhow, but with I the salary they pay you ministers, you better have a good sense of humor. No, I and tell a, you, that's the truth. And a rich wife, huh? I went to cash Did you marry check? for money, Doc? I went to cash a check the other day, and the it bounced? banker gave me out some old money, and he said, are you afraid of germs? I said, no, no germ could live on the salary I get. <laughs> You know, I never knew that they cracked jokes like that in a Baptist church. No, I thought it was all hellfire and brimstone. Really, I did. I, well, I if, thought they were very serious in the if, Baptist if, church. If it depends, if they need that, why, well, we give it to them. Yeah. Well, I imagine you're a very interesting minister to listen to. <laughs> and are you still preaching? Yes, well, preaching twice. I'd like twice to come to hear you sometime. Preaching twice every Sunday and delivered 147 addresses between Sundays last year. Oh, well, could you deliver one to my address? Uh, <laughs> I mean, where, where do you do this? Well, you're, not, you're not preaching here in L.A. at all. No? Not get right here. I, the old temple, Philharmonic Auditorium, was my former church. I was there 16 years. And that's why I got so well acquainted with all the movie people. Uh -huh. I married Doug Fairbanks and Mary Pickford 40 years oh. ago. And I'm sorry to say, but I buried Will Rogers when he was killed. He and I used to have humorous debates for the yeah. civil charity. He's an old friend of mine, too. Yes, well, he's a great I friend. taught him how to play the guitar, you know. <laughs> yes, I did, really. And, uh, do you utilize your sense of humor in your preaching? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, in what way? I... Well, uh, any... Do you start off with, like, saying, a funny thing happened to me on my way to the church? <laughs> no, I do that, too, for instance. Now, I went nope. up to San Francisco to a, to a banquet. And I was getting dressed in my room when a knock came on the door and I said, come in. And a man walked in all dressed in his tuxedo and said, I want to introduce you, doctor, and I want to know something about you. And I uh, also uh, will take you to the banquet room. Well, I said, fine and dandy. I said, I'm just tying my bow tie. I said, can you tie one of these bow ties that still stand straight? He said, you bet I can. He came over and put his arm around me, laid me down on the bed. And, tied it. I got up. I said, well, that's fine and dandy, but why'd you make me lie down? Well, he said, that's the only way I can do it. I'm an undertaker. <laughs> well, that's certainly, that's certainly a holier-than-thou attitude. <laughs> more jokes up your sleeve, Rev? Yes, for instance, now, I, you know... You don't care if I call you Rev instead no, of Rev. Uh, uh, without show, you know people enjoy jokes told on yourself. Yeah, that's right. They're getting so sensitive, I can't tell a joke on the Jews, I can't tell a joke on the colored people, I can't hardly tell a joke on an Irishman. Yeah. <laughs> this is true, you know, if you tell jokes about Italians or Frenchmen, every group now, yeah. it, it's, it goes even further than that. If you tell a joke about a dentist, or a plumber, or a carpenter, or a <laughs> anybody at all. Well, everybody so is... I tell them on myself. Yeah, that's good. You say, well, I can't tell a joke about an Irishman on myself. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, I was... Uh, one night after I'd heard... Uh, uh, Funny thing happened to me on my way the to great, the synagogue the this morning. <laughs> About midnight when Lou Brown and I jumped in the car and started when I saw a friend of mine on the sidewalk that had made the mistake of taking something into his stomach that made him see double and think half. And I said to Miss Brown, we better take him home. So I drove up at the sidewalk, got out and took him to the arm and he said, uh, well, hello, doctor, what are you doing here? I said, to take you home, come on. Got him in the car, away we went, got out in front of his house and I got him out and got him up the steps and rang the bell. And I said, now, Bill, I've got you home, I'll go. But he grabbed me and he said, no, 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 don't you go yet. You wait till my wife comes to the door. I want her to see who I've been out with tonight. <laughs> the Baptist Church is going to get a lot of converts here tonight. Huh? <laughs> going to be a lot of water spilled around there. Huh? Doc, we ought to go into business together. You give the jokes and sermons, and I'll take up the collection. Yeah. 
We split 50-50. I'll keep the cash and give you the buttons. Uh, let me tell you one more, though. Uh, I wish you would, huh? <laughs> An old man who had the heart trouble was home and he bought a, a Irish sweepstakes ticket. And he won $50,000, but his wife and daughter were afraid to tell him, afraid he'd drop dead. So they called up the Episcopal clergyman to come, an old man friend, to come and tell him. So he came and they talked a few moments pleasantly and finally he said, John, didn't you buy a ticket for the sweepstakes? He said, yes, I did. He said, now supposing you should win $50,000, what would you do with it? <laughs> And the old man said, I tell you, if I win $50,000, I'll give half of it to you. And the preacher dropped dead. you're one of America's best-known ministers, and it's a real honor having you up here, and I'd appreciate it if you could put in a good word for me now and then, you know. <laughs> you know, with the right crowd. <laughs> Lena, let's get back. I gotta talk to Lena here, you know. We've been ignoring her, Doctor. <laughs> you want a chair? What? You tired? No. You look great. You look like a fellow 50 years old. I never saw it. Thank you, sir. I mean, you a, want me a young-looking 50-year-old. Take you out for lunch and pay for it? <laughs> Just pay for it. I'll, listen, I'll... listen. Now, you wrote a book. You bet I did. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. <laughs> you get $50 for saying the secret word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see, uh, what was the name? Did you read the book? I went to buy it, and they were all sold out. They were? Well, that's and a good book. And I'll tell you what book. I'll do. I published a book called Life and Laughter. Nine of my popular lectures, and every serious paragraph in the book is illustrated with a funny story. I'll give you a book autograph if you'll give me one of yours autographs. <laughs> I'll do it if you'll mention the name of my book. <laughs> Well, how it's, do I? Me, me and Groucho. No, it's Groucho and me. Oh, no, that's uh, it. <laughs> Lena, let's get back to you now. By the way, how much yeah. do you weigh when you weigh? Well, uh, I usually weigh 190. Mm -hmm. Is that why they call you Lena? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about Rocky in the early days. What was he like as a baby? Was he a big uh, child? Well, he was a big child, yes. He, what did he weigh uh, he at the ringside? He was 11 pounds. 11 pounds? Yes. Uh, ringside, huh? Yes. That's a big baby, huh? Big baby. When he was born, he probably slapped the doctor, didn't he? <laughs> well, uh, was he a good boy? Did he behave? Does he mind you when he was a baby? He was good, but there was time when he, he didn't mind around, me. Huh? There was time when he didn't mind me, no. and I spanked him. Yeah? You yes. Slug him? Huh? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Rocky Marciano, the champion of the world, huh? <laughs> I'm sure you're very proud of Rocky, Lena. Yes, very proud. I've been teasing you about him, but I'm aware of the fact that he has I great know, records. I know. Not only as a fighter, but as a nice guy, too. He now, is. were all his fights fixed? <laughs> no, not one fixed. No? He's a, just a good fight. <laughs> well, it's a tough fight, uh, Mom, but yes. you won. And when you see that broken down son of yours, give him my regards, huh? <laughs> I will. And tell him he's lucky. His path has never crossed mine. Well, right. <laughs> right, let's play your bet your life. Uh, Mr. Fenneman, would you bring out the question uh, box, please? Got you. I. Well, you wouldn't hit a man with uh, the claws, would you, huh? <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought you were in Florida or out of town. I came up to pick up my mom. Uh, you haven't... You haven't heard uh, this conversation with your mother, uh, have you? Uh, I just heard one thing, something about a stumbled bum. <laughs> you know, I... You know, I'm always kidding around like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rocky, to me, you were the immortal, the great fighter of our time. <laughs> I always said, when you were in your prime, you, you could elect any lightweight in America. <laughs> Groucho, uh, um, I think we better get on with the quiz. Yeah, uh, better get on with the quiz. Better run out of time yeah. here. Uh, Go on and get me a baseball I'm... bat. Right? <laughs> yeah. how long, pardon me, how long are you going to be in town, Rocky? About a week. Why don't you come back here next week and uh, we'll have a rematch. Uh. Okay, will you be here? Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, you don't frighten me, big boy. <laughs> I'll be here next week. Uh, However, I'm not sure that I'll be here the week after. <laughs> I'll take care of him the best day he ever had. Uh, you know what Had you and Mrs. Marciano agreed on a category between no, you? No, because I'm going to allow some serviceman here to come down and get the money, if he can, out of this quiz. Well, don't I'm you not... like money? No, I don't need you with $50. I can get home on that. Oh, <laughs> oh wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I see when you may have to stay up. Uh, is there a serviceman out there who's uh, on the lam? I mean, A-W-O-L. Groucho, it looks like this may take a little time, so why don't we use the time for a message from... How do you do? Uh, my name is Groucho Marx. Let me... What is your... Uh, what I'm is Barry you? Hollis. You Barry Hollis? Right. Well, this is the uh, Reverend Brower. You take and my priest now. You have to be a good man. <laughs> this is... Uh, <laughs> this is Mrs. Uh, Marciano. How do you do? How do you do? Take a poke at him, uh, Mom. Huh? <laughs> Don't you forget that book. Well, no, I, I certainly won't. I'll see that you get it. I'll see you before I, I leave here tonight. Oh, all right. You hang around back there. <laughs> That's the kind of man that make religion worthwhile. Georgia, what do we do about a category for these people? Did you yeah. select a category? What, what was it? Sports. Uh, sports, sports. Sports and games. Yes. Well, you know how to play the game, huh? Do you know how to yes, play? Yes, I do. So you want to take the first one? You have four. Let the lady take the first one, huh? The hundred dollar ones are a little easier than You know, than you got to get 500 in order to get a chance at the big money. And I know Rocky needs his money desperately, yeah? <laughs> For a hundred dollars, in what game would you use knights and bishops? Chess is right, yeah, sure. I thought knights you would use night gowns, but I guess you don't. We now have one hundred dollars and three more chances to make five. What should I do? <laughs> you know, you gotta win five hundred. Yeah, I don't want to influence you. That's good. That's yeah. good good pick. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want your son to like me. Yeah. <laughs> In what sport or game is the score of 300 perfect? They're going to wind up married, these children. Rocky is going to have a new father. What branch of the service are you in? Air Force. Air Force, huh? Well, you say there's plenty of flying right here. <laughs> what was the answer, by the way? Say, bowling. I thought 300 was pinochle in space. Like bowling. Bowling, yeah. Yes. Yeah, like bowling green. All right, now you got right. 300. You need five. You have two more chances to make a total of five. You have 300 now. Got to try... Um... Get another. another blue. All right. This will do it if you get it right. You yeah. Have we 500. You, we play, you play Pinochle, Mrs. Marciano? No. Pedro? No, just bingo. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> In football, how many points are awarded for a safety? <laughs> Here they go again. <laughs> Two points for a safety? I thought a safety only had one point. I mean, if you're wearing diapers. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you quit the Air Force and run away with Mrs. Marciano? 
and, my, and Rocky will chase you. Yeah. <laughs> if you think war is dangerous, you'll find out. <laughs> now, what is your rank? I mean, how is your, no, what is your rank? Airman third class. Third class what? Third class apprentice radar operator. Oh, well, you're about as low as a man can get in the sub. <laughs> Unless you were in a submarine, huh? Well, you got one more chance here. You already have your 500, if you remember. Take it easy, huh? Take an easy one to be sure, huh? Yes. All right, here's a $100 one. Oh, are you foxy, uh... <laughs> For $100, what is another name for ping pong? Here they go again, watch. <laughs> They'll be nuzzling in a minute, huh? <laughs> if you don't know, guess. Huh? Ball. Ball. No, table tennis. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's all right, because you've already won $500, yeah. which well. means you'll be back in a little while to try for two, five, or $10,000. Okay. And if you see that big plug ugly again, tell him I'm laying for him. I will. Nice meeting you, and I'm glad you won some money nice up meet there. You too, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Marciano and Airman Third Class Barry Hollis won $500, so here they are with a chance for 10, 5, or 2. Would you come right back up here? Now, um, it's Barry Hollis, is that right? That's right. Now, you pick a number from 1 to 10 for $10,000. You, Sperry? 3. 3. Put up a 3. Now, you pick a number for 5000 7. 7. Now, if either of these numbers comes up, that's what the question is worth. The number. If any other number comes up and you win, it's worth a total of two thousand. Uh, is that clear? Now spin the wheel. Almost. Here it is for a total of two thousand. During the celebrated Scopes trial in Tennessee in 1925, Clarence Darrow was the chief attorney for the defense. For a total of 2,000, who was the famous man who was chief prosecuting attorney in the Scopes trial opposed Darrow? Talk it over. <laughs> What's the name? What's the answer? We haven't got no idea. No, I, well, it's William Jennings Bryan, who ran three times for president. I'm sorry you missed it, but you still have, uh, how much did you wind up with? 600. 600? Well, that's not too bad. A night's work, huh? Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. Yes. And Thank tell you. that big love that I think. <laughs>